So hello, and welcome to another video by Adrian Davey from Pure Electric. In this video, I'm going to help try and talk you through the uh, AM2S assessment from NET. I'm going to be using their um, free assessment manual, which you can download off of their website. And I'm going to talk you through this uh, just like I would with my apprentices at work. Um, try and give you an understanding of what they might be looking for or, or anything that you might need to be aware of. Now this manual does explain pretty much everything that you need. Um, it tells you the length of time, it tells you the what they're looking for, the criteria to a certain extent. It, and then it gives you a list of common errors where most apprentices fail. Um, what you also need to remember is that they also provide apprentices with a spec. Okay, so that specification you're supposed to follow at all stages. It tells you what to install, how to install it, um, obviously follow to, following the regs. But it tells you what breakers to use, what cable to use, what equipment to use, etc. So as long as you follow the specification, uh, you should be fine. And that is Net's argument for not giving much feedback, okay, which I kind of agree with to a certain extent because what they don't want they don't want people training to pass the exam okay it'd be very easy for people such as myself to have a, a one or two day training session to teach you to pass the exam okay so i get that uh, however also on the flip side of that for um, an assessor's point of view a teacher's point of view in the assessment process, feedback is the biggest part of any assessment. Unless you're told what you've done wrong, what you do right, what you do wrong, uh, things to think about next time, you can't then go away and grow. So I have a lot of apprentices that say, oh, do you know what, I don't know why I failed. I think I did everything right. You know, they start end up second guessing themselves. You know, I'm looking at myself wondering what I've done wrong. Have I taught them the right stuff? You know, is it me? Um, I spent a lot of time going back over my practices and procedures just to make sure that I wasn't at fault and then I came to the conclusion where it must be either something the apprentices are doing wrong or there's something in the assessment process that we don't know about. Um, but, you know, I get I get why net are cagey. Um, you know, you've only got to look on the internet and type in AM2 training and there's plenty of videos that show you what to do. Um, obviously try and help people get through that that assessment um, as far as I'm aware the the pass percentage for the AM2 or the AM2S is about is less than 30% you know that is that is huge that is a fundamental failure rate um, huge failure rate and whether that's down to um, whether that's down to employers not doing the right training whether that's because apprentices are being trained by apprentices who were trained by apprentices, you know, and it's like um, whispers, you know, uh, Chinese whispers, the game that you used to play as a child, you know, by the time the information gets to the end, it's very different to what it started off as. Uh, or whether it's the training companies themselves that just aren't doing the training correct, possibly even the qualification itself you know we, there's probably many many factors that are all contributing to that that uh, failure i've looked over this am2 assessment uh, quite thoroughly and i'm extremely happy with the level um, that net have set for this assessment so i believe that this is correct i don't think it should be done down i don't think it should be made any easier um, as far as I'm concerned, this is the, the endpoint assessment. This is the, the, the gateway to whether you are an electrician or an electrician's mate. And if you can't get through the grade, then that's fine. You're, you're a skilled labourer, you're an electrician's mate. Um, but to get through that assessment, you have, to, you have to be able to do this. And it's a fair assessment and then you're qualified. Happy days, job done. So I'm happy with that. I would just like net to consider feedback for assessors you know it would be nice to know the criteria whether it's just a straight pass or fail um, i've heard that it's either past merit or distinction so if that's true you know what's the grading for that how many small minors can they get wrong is it three minors make a major you know all these little things would help people such as myself 
and the um, apprentices come through to understand the process. Okay, and if they can understand the process, then obviously that will help them grow. What we don't want to do is we don't want to make that assessment easy. Okay, because you know if I was the, the assessor in that situation and I was in charge of who went through as a, an electrician, I'd take my job very seriously. And if people didn't cut the mustard, they wouldn't they wouldn't get through it because um, I would be keeping the industry safe. I would be thinking about the customers that are going to have these people working in their houses. And if they don't cut the grade, they're not safe to work by themselves. So with all that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this pre-assessment manual. So this is readily available uh, off of the NET website. Um, there's some instructional videos to watch on there. They're not very long, I've got to say. They're only about a minute, minute and a half long, most of them. They don't really go into any detail. They do show you a few sort of snippets of what they might be looking at. So, you know, like if you look at the testing video, it kind of shows you nulling the leads and making sure you've tested the testers and proved the testers work. Um, that, that kind of thing. So it's, well, they're worth watching, even though they only are a minute and a half. Now, one of the things that I want to make clear to every apprentice looking to go through this AM2, it doesn't matter how many videos you watch, unless you understand how to use the books, you aren't going to pass this exam. Okay, um, Videos are great for helping tie up knowledge um, and filling in a few blanks, but ultimately what you need to do is you need to read the books. You need to practice, okay? And the videos can help tie in any loose ends. Um, I get so many apprentices that won't read the books, they're looking for videos, want to be spoon fed, you know. Um, and the trouble is, if you guys think of any video that you've watched in your life, even the best one, you know, your favourite video, you try and play that movie out in your head from start to finish, it won't happen. You know, there's scenes that you forget, there's twists that you forget, the only, you know, we remember the, the key, some of the key points, but the actual movie itself all we remember is that was a good film or that was a bad film and a couple of bits here or there so so don't rely on the movies now net do provide you with the books that you need and this is not a memory course this isn't about um how good your memory is you know i'm not one of those people that memorizes the reg numbers and reads the uh, bsm671 you know it's not like reading don't enjoy reading it as such uh, you know, for me, it's a very dull book to read. Um, I just know that I need to understand what's in it in order to be able to install correctly. So they provide you with the books. If you practice those books and read those books before you get to the assessment, on the day, you are allowed to use those books. It's an open book exam, okay? You can flick through those books and you can see what's going for, on um, and check what you're doing. However, it does take time. So what I would suggest is you don't leave it to the day to read the book because you're going to spend most of your time trying to understand what's in it. So you need to get a good understanding of the book so that when you're reading through it, you can literally scan the page, know the information that you need to pick out and carry on. OK, and that way, you know, as you're doing the testing, for instance, you can start turning the pages as you go. So R1, R2 readings, you know, insertion resistance done that, done that, yep, I've done all that, turn the page, next test, okay? And that way you're gonna increase your chances of reading. There are no shortcuts to this exam. Um, there is no magic bullet, okay? If you wanna be an electrician, you've gotta put in the effort. And that's as simple as that. And you will need these books in your career. If you don't wanna read the books, that's fine. Skilled labourer, no problem with that. Okay, so, moving on. The first bit that I would like to talk you through, okay, is considerations on the day. Now I've got a printout here, so it talks through preparing for your assessment. It says here, obviously, get a good night's sleep. This is all off the uh, net website. Get a good night's sleep before the assessment. Obviously, don't turn up hungover, had a heavy weekend or whatever. You want to be firing on all cylinders. You've got to, you printers need to realise this is like £900 this assessment. You know, you don't want to be messing around. And I think it's about £500 just for the installation section. OK. Make sure you know exactly where the test centre is and how to get there. Leave enough time to travel as you don't want the stress of being late, which is great advice. You know, I can't abide people that are late. And also you don't want to be stressing while you get there because you're, you're already setting yourself up to fail. 
you want to get there with plenty of time so that you can read your books. And you can take your own books, but leave them in the car, obviously. You can take your own tools and leave them in the, in the van. You don't have to feel like you're by yourself, although you have to use net tools. Um, I have heard a rumour that you might be able to use your own cutters. I'm not sure about that, but again, if they're in the car or van, they're there. But get yourself there in plenty of time. Read up on the bits you're not sure about. It says mobile phones, smart watches, MP3 players and all electronic devices are not allowed in the assessment area for obvious reasons. OK. If you have any of those with you, they will need to be handed in at the beginning of the assessment and signed out at the end of each day. So again, leave it in your car, then you don't have to sign it in. Then it goes on to say what happens on the day. So when you arrive at the assessment centre, you'll be welcomed by your assessor. Before you start your test, you'll go through an induction process and will be asked to complete some paperwork. The assessor will give you a tour of the assessment area and will highlight any health and safety procedures. You will then be given the assessment manual, which shows you what you need to do and all the diagrams you need. Now, this assessment manual is what we call the specification. Now, inside that, it tells you everything that they want you to do. If you follow that, you'll pass. Simple as that. A lot of people fail because they forget to check the specification, they forget to read it, you know, they crack on, I know what I'm doing, etc. And then they get it wrong. OK, follow the specification. Can't say that enough. So to carry out your installation, you'll be provided with a bay, which is similar to what most training providers or colleges have. Once the assessment starts, you'll be given preparation and reading time for each section, which I'm going to talk through. The manual is kept in the bay. So you don't need to memorise anything. Again, as I said, it's not a memory test. You just need to be able to follow instruction. It's the same as basically what they're training you for is when you go out to work for a company, work for yourself, you will be given a set of instructions. You then need to follow those instructions. If you don't follow the instructions, you could end up not being paid. You could end up with legal costs where you haven't done it right and someone's in suing you. And these are the things they want to make sure that you're going to avoid, especially for your employers. OK. <clears throat> You'll also be given breaks throughout the day. Your assessor will inform you about these during your induction. Important things to remember. So, again, it talks about the mobile phones not being in the assessment area. Um, you won't need to bring any tools. You must use the tools provided by the assessment centre and everything you will need will be provided to you on the day. So again, I'm not, like I said, there was a rumour that I heard about the cutters. Don't take that as gospel. Remember to bring some form of photographic ID. We accept the following. Driving licence, passport, ECS card or employer ID. Obviously to prove who you are. Um, otherwise someone like me could turn up for an apprentice that I didn't think would be able to pass and get them through easily. You should also bring your own safety boots and appropriate workwear. OK, so I'm thinking goggles, boots, high vis, gloves. Can't think of anything else that you would need other than that. After the assessment. So once you've completed your assessment, your assessor will tell you when to expect the results. This is usually within no more than five working days. If you have passed, NET will issue your assessment of occupational competence certificate or endpoint assessment certificate. And then it's, there's a link. Find out more on their certification page. If you need to resit, speak to your training provider about how this works and what you'll need to do. They also have a special learning requirements section. So if you have any special learning requirements, you will need to inform the assessment centre before you attend and apply for extra time if necessary. Your training provider will need to supply documentary proof of your needs from a health professional, so special educational reports. Um, and then there's a, there's a special considerations and reasonable adjustments policy for more information, which you can click on. Right. OK, so now after I've said that, I want to keep these videos quite short. Um, I'm going to start talking through the section. So I'm going to start with section A1, safe working practices um, and talk you through this. So that will be in the next video. This is just the pre video warm up, so to speak. OK, um, I hope to speak to you guys soon. I hope this video is going to help people um, because ultimately we all want to get you through. However, you need to take ownership of this and you need to make this happen for yourself. OK, um, you know, when I first qualified, I wasn't very good at testing. So what I did is I bought myself a multifunction tester. 
I then stripped my rental property down and kept testing it and testing it over and over again until I kind of got you know really good understanding of what was going on uh, and used good guidance notes free while I was doing it as well. So you know, those are the levels that you guys need to do to get through this. There is no easy option. Right, take guys, uh, take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.